The Endocrine Disruption Exchange, known as TEDx, is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization founded in 2003 by environmental health analyst Dr. Theo Colborn. At TEDx, we compile and disseminate scientific evidence on the health and environmental damage caused by low-level exposure to chemicals that affect our hormone or endocrine system, known as endocrine disruptors. To understand endocrine disruption, you must first know a little about the endocrine system. The endocrine system is involved in every stage of life, including conception, development in the womb and throughout early life, puberty, adulthood, and aging. It orchestrates development and growth, reproduction, intelligence and behavior, metabolism, immune function, and much more. The endocrine system works through hormones such as estrogens, androgens, and thyroid hormones, also brain, metabolic, and immune system hormones, and many other signaling molecules in the body. The Endocrine Society defines an endocrine disruptor as an exogenous chemical, meaning from outside the body, or a mixture of chemicals that can interfere with any aspect of hormone action. The health effects of endocrine disruptors were first recognized in the late 1980s. Through an extensive review of the scientific literature, Dr. Colborn identified numerous problems among the fish and wildlife living in and around the North American Great Lakes. In this chart, you see that bald eagles, beluga whales, Chinook salmon, herring gulls, snapping turtles, and many other species had reproductive abnormalities, birth defects in their offspring, and overall population decline. None of the birds or fish examined had normal thyroid glands. Other findings included weakened eggshells, male birds with female organs, and parents abandoning their nests. These effects are all disruptions of hormonal systems. At the same time, studies were being conducted on the children of pregnant women who had eaten large quantities of contaminated fish from the Great Lakes. The children with higher levels of PCBs in their umbilical cords weighed less and had poor cognitive function at age four. At age 11, they were more impulsive, had lower IQ scores, poor attention, memory, and reading comprehension. In 1991, a work session was held with scientists from 17 different disciplines to discuss their related findings. It included wildlife biologists, anthropologists, endocrinologists, toxicologists, and more. The book published as a result of this meeting described the profound consequences of environmental endocrine disruptors on animals, fish, wildlife, and humans. It was at this meeting that the word endocrine disruption was first used. Most of the endocrine disruptors we know of are made from the byproducts of extracting, processing, and burning fossil fuels, including coal, oil, and natural gas. Chemicals derived from these byproducts are components of flame retardants, food additives, pesticides, plastics, dyes, preservatives, and more. They are found in our homes, schools, and workplaces, food and food packaging, toys, clothing, cosmetics, sunscreens, medical supplies, electronics, furniture, cleaning products, building materials. The list goes on. We eat, drink, and touch endocrine disrupting chemicals every day. They are in our soil, our water, and the very air we breathe. Some remain in our bodies and accumulate over time. Others are metabolized and excreted quickly, but they are so prevalent at any time they can be measured and nearly everyone tested. They've been found in people's blood, urine, stool, saliva, tears, and perspiration. They are even found in human placenta, amniotic fluid, and umbilical cord blood. Concentrations are typically higher in children than in adults. Chemicals that affect the endocrine system are particularly troublesome because hormones act at very low levels in the body. Thus, chemicals in the environment acting on the hormone system can cause detrimental effects at extremely low levels. Most concerning are chemicals that have effects within the range that humans are exposed to them. In addition, because hormones control how our bodies develop, prenatal and early childhood exposure to endocrine disruptors can have permanent changes in how we develop and function. By the time we are born, our future health has been programmed in part by our womb environment. Environment is the key word. Genetic inheritance cannot explain the relatively recent and dramatic increases in many disorders which have been shown to be endocrine related. These include autism, ADHD, asthma, obesity and diabetes, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, thyroid disorders, infertility, many types of cancer, and more. The increasing incidence of these conditions coincides with the introduction of modern synthetic chemicals in our world. And there is now scientific evidence to support the hypothesis 
that these conditions are in part the result of exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. As part of our mission, TEDx has compiled thousands of scientific studies on the endocrine effects of different chemicals. Over the years, many people, including policymakers and chemical safety regulators, have asked us for a validated list of endocrine disrupting chemicals. A few years ago, we began to develop such a list. Our goal was to create a list of chemicals with one or more published, accessible, primary scientific studies demonstrating effects on the endocrine system. The initial list was released in 2011. We recently upgraded it and added sources and uses for each chemical, which makes it a much more useful and informative resource. There are nearly 1,000 chemicals on the list and many more will be added in the near future. This list of 1,000 chemicals is just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of thousands of chemicals in existence, most of which have never been tested for endocrine disruption. In fact, the way that governments typically assess chemicals for their safety, referred to as risk assessment, does not work for endocrine disruptors for several reasons. First, government agencies don't require chemicals to be tested at the very low concentrations at which hormones function. In fact, they look for effects at higher doses and assume that lower doses are safe without actually testing the exposures they declare are safe. What they really need to do is test chemicals at exposures that are comparable to what humans are exposed to. Second, typical endpoints in government tests are organ weights, birth defects, deformities, cancer, and death. Tests for endocrine disruption need to be relevant and sensitive to hormone function across the broad spectrum of biological systems that hormones govern. Third, hormones affect us in different ways at different times during our lives. Critical periods of exposure include prenatal and early childhood development, puberty, pregnancy, and even reproductive senescence. The effects of exposure during these time points should be measured for regulatory purposes. Fourth, endocrine-related health effects can show up at any stage in life. For example, prenatal exposure to endocrine disruptors can lead to effects that don't manifest until adulthood. Endocrine disruption can also affect the children and grandchildren of the exposed generation. Government testing needs to reflect these long-term multi-generational effects. The uniqueness and complexity of endocrine disruption demands intelligent, careful thought in order to develop a regulatory framework that protects us from harmful exposures. Families and indeed entire nations are struggling under the physical, emotional, and financial burden of endocrine disruption. In the U.S., we spend over a trillion dollars a year treating endocrine-related disorders. Better treatments are not the answer. It's time to focus on prevention. And that's where a little bit of good news comes in. You can't change your genes, but you can change your environment. You can tell your politicians we need better laws to reduce our exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. And you can do your best to avoid unnecessary exposure. It's not always easy. A good simple motto is learn more, use less. Remember that, learn more, use less. The TEDx list is the first step in learning how to make smart choices in what we eat, drink, breathe, and put on our skin. It is for our own good and the good of the next several generations to come. I would like to thank the entire TEDx staff and of course our many supportive funding sources. You can find more information on our website at endocrinedisruption.org.